Hey, y'all. Hey, what's up, y'all? What's up? What's up, divas? What's up, divos? What's up, everybody? What's up? Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back to my channel. What's up, y'all? Okay, girl, what's up? So, what's up, you guys? Welcome back. Y'all already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday. And I'm here, you guys. It is fall break out here in Arizona. Okay, fall break. I know some of y'all, like, girl, they just went back to school. But they really did go back to school, like, in August. So, they got fall break. To be honest with y'all, I don't think kids ever go to school anymore like that. Like, straight up, when I was in school, I remember when I was going to school, we didn't have so many days off. Like, I grew up in New York City, went to school in Queens, Flushing, Queens, you know. So, I made Queens, girl. But as I remember, I don't I don't remember getting a fall break. I don't remember all of these days off. Now, not even just for myself, but even for my own kids. Like, I really don't remember having them home so much. Like, a fall break. There was never a fall break in New York. Like, they went back to school when it was fall damn near. So, I don't remember a fall break. They get, like, a lot of days off. And I don't know if it's for the teachers or if it's for the kids, but girl, they are on fall break for a week, and I'm glad for them because you know let them let them relax or whatever, let them let let them let them get their little brains on reset. So when they go back to school, they know how to behave and do their work and stuff and learn. But I don't remember all these days off, like girl, seriously, I don't remember all these days off. But anyway, you guys, what's up? How y'all doing? Hope y'all all are having like a really great day. When you when you're watching this, you know what I'm saying. I hope y'all all are having like a really great day. I came through today with the curly bangs. Okay, the curly bangs again. Now, I did try. Look, I had my hair curly for like the whole week out curly. And I even put it back on Saturday. I put it back, you know. I put it back in this little curly steak, you know. And I'm trying to figure out how to get to wear it like that without having to do so much work. But I did wear it like that for the whole week. You know, I didn't do it every day. I actually just woke up um, for a couple of days and just threw on a headband. You know, I, I left it up in a bonnet overnight. My daughter told me to put it in a pineapple, but girl, I couldn't put it in a pineapple. It wasn't it wasn't long enough to put it in a pineapple. You know, if y'all got any suggestions, then let me know. But I just normally just had to sleep with it, just put the bonnet on. That's all I could do. But if y'all have any suggestions of how I could put it up, let me know. But, you know, so when I woke up, I just put on a headband and wore it out like that. Now, mind you, we are like our most uh, hardest critics on ourselves, like serious. And I, I am very like, I'm hard on myself. Like, and I'm be honest with you guys. I'm very hard on myself and it's okay. You know, at least I don't allow myself to do dumb shit. Right. So when I feel like, okay, when I'm having my curly, curly hair moment, when I'm wearing curly hair, but when I put on a headband with it, I just feel like it makes me look wider. It makes me look fatter, bigger, as in body wise, not just face, but as in body wise. And I know I probably am just make, reaching and I'm just doing a little bit too much when I'm saying this, but like we are our worst, our worst critics. And I just feel like when I put on a headband and my hair is short like that and curly, I just feel like I look even bigger body wise. And then I also realized, you know what, April, I'm going to stop wearing tank tops until I lose all the weight because I know this. Now I know this is not just me because I've had friends that felt this way about their body image when wearing like tank tops. I noticed with myself when I would wear a tank top, my body is broader, you know, like I'm, I'm broader, I'm bigger. I just look even bigger. So I had to go back out and get um, some new shirts some new tank, you know, some new t-shirts. And the, the thing about it is, you know what? I don't know if it's me, if I'm getting old or what, um, but girl, I'm, I'm, t I had to go buy a whole brand new pack because I couldn't find the pack that I had already bought. Like probably like six months ago, maybe not even that long ago, probably like about four months ago. I bought a pack of t-shirts, okay, white t-shirts from Target. Now, I don't really do the Walmart t-shirts, like I don't do the Hanes and the Fruit of the Looms. I don't do those because the material is just totally different from this brand that I do like from Target. The material is different. It doesn't have like those piling linen balls. It doesn't stretch like this. It outstretches. It doesn't outstretch, you know, like the Fruit of the Looms. So I had to go and buy some new white t-shirts because I noticed I just felt like I looked bigger and broader in my favorite tank tops, you know. I got like about seven or eight tank tops that I've worn throughout the entire summer. That was the only ones I was going to buy. I've got two pairs of shorts. And I just keep me washing because I don't go anywhere. And I felt like I'm not going to go out and buy myself a whole new wardrobe if I'm not going anywhere and if I really want to lose weight. But then I felt like over time, I didn't like how the t-shirts were looking on me. I felt like they made me look broader, more bulkier. You know what I'm saying? And I don't really want to look bulky. Okay. I don't know about y'all, but I don't want to look bulky. So I figured, let me go and get my t-shirts out the drawers or wherever I put them. It was a four pack, $20 for four pack. These are good brand. I think it's called Goodfellas, I think, whatever. And so 
I wore two of those shirts and I cannot find the other two. So I had yesterday, me and Mumsy, we decided to just go out for the day and just chill and just go look around, go to the stores, you know? So I said, I'm going to buy these shirts because I don't want to look so broad. And I just felt like the white t-shirts made me look a little bit slimmer. I don't know. That could just be me going crazy, but I just feel like we are our worst critics. But yeah, so I figured the curly hair, I can't really wear it too much in a headband until I like lose the weight. Girl, I'd be just criticizing myself all day long. Like seriously, I would walk past the fucking mirror, the, the long, tall mirror and criticize myself. And I know that's not a good thing to do, but I just criticize myself all day long. That's all I ever do is just criticize myself. But other than that, you know, like I said, me and Mumsy, we went out. We enjoyed ourselves over the weekend. Um, we did go. Okay, so our plan was this. We was going to do, we was, we were going to do a comeback. Me and Mumsy was going to do a comeback video. I'm not really sure what's going on with my camera. Like, okay, there we go. Um, we was going to do a comeback video. A comeback video meaning we was going to come back. We was going to do like a, maybe like a short series, like a spinoff of the Dollar Tree hauls that we used to do. Because I've gotten plenty of comments. Oh, we miss Mumsy and you guys' Dollar Tree haul. I've gotten a lot of comments about missing me and Mumsy's Dollar Tree hauls. Y'all do realize Mumsy's 17, okay? And I don't know. I don't think she really want to sit there and do a Dollar Tree hauls with me anymore. Not to mention the Dollar Tree is not even what it used to be. So anyway, me, like I said, me and Mumsy, we decided we was going to do a comeback of, you know, a reunion a reunion of our Dollar Tree hauls, which is a great idea. So we went yesterday to the um, Dollar Tree. Now, we went to the Dollar Tree, and I haven't been to the Dollar Tree that I used to go to like every other day. I haven't been there in months, like months, because there's one down the street from my house, and the one down the street from my house, though it doesn't carry everything, I'm fine with that because the prices is not the same. The Dollar Tree is not the same. So let me go and see what I can get, what I need. And I don't even do that anymore. I don't really fuck with the Dollar Tree at all anymore, okay? So when we went there yesterday, everything was changed in that whole entire Dollar Tree. The floors was changed. The, 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 whole, the whole lineup was different. I don't even think the same people worked there anymore that remembered me. Maybe they had the day off. But the whole lineup was changed. The whole interior was different. It was just all different. They even had made like a little security station for the manager, manager's office. It was just totally different. And I was fine with that. You know, I went in, we went in. Girl, did it take us like the longest to find anything up in there? Like it was empty, like there were shelves missing stuff. And it wasn't even that it was missing stuff. There was not anything in there that was of interest to me, like straight up or mumsy. We went for some crabs, everything that was like a dollar twenty five. They tried to raise it to three dollars and then five dollars and i was kind of like over that whole entire fiasco of you know what i'm saying three dollars and five dollars at the dollar tree i said you know what it's called the dollar tree i guess it doesn't really stand for a dollar anymore it was a bad enough y'all went up to a dollar 25 they they raised the prices to a dollar 25 and made the shit smaller made stuff smaller like okay so we're going to raise prices and make things smaller okay that makes sense i I see it. It makes sense to me. I hope it makes sense to you guys, right? So we go ahead and we went. We got a few things. Um, we got enough things. I said, I'm not going to go overboard with this Dollar Tree haul because they ain't got shit in here that I really, really want. You know what I'm saying? Like you can do better at going like to Walmart. I wouldn't say Target, but Target is a little pricey. Okay. And we all know that. So after that, we did go to Target. You know, we got on the freeway. We got, we went to Target. Out of the million Targets that's out here, we went to one that was like a little bit closer, two miles, two and a half miles. Um, got me some shirts, got my shirts. We looked around. We got a couple of things, you know, from Sarge. And I, I decided to look in the food section, like, you know, the produce section and cold food section. They are very pricey. They are. And I don't think you want to get your cleaning supplies from Target. You may want to go to Walmart. Dollar Tree stuff is cool too. Like, but I, I'm like kind of over the Dollar Tree, but yeah, we're going to do a comeback reunion for a Dollar Tree haul. So we'll, we'll be, we'll be recording that soon and getting that out there for you guys soon. So for those of you guys who kept saying to me, leaving the comments about how y'all miss Mumsy and my Dollar Tree hauls, we do appreciate that because I miss them too. But you know, um, she, she has grown up, you know, she's got her own thing. Mumsy's got her own channel. Okay. She's got her own YouTube channel. So make sure you check it out. I will remember to put it in the des description, but if I'm, if I don't, it is on my channel as featured channels, but she does have her own channel now and she records, she vlogs. So she doesn't vlog that much. Maybe she's probably got like two or three videos up there. Um, and I did offer my services to help, but you know, let her do her own thing. You know, that's her channel, let her do her own thing. But yeah, so she has her own channel. Um, and she just does it for the fun. Like it should be done as for fun. And that's what I really came out and started to do YouTube, which was for fun, you know, and it turned into something totally different. But that's okay. I appreciate you guys. But like like I was saying, um, 
we will get that video out there for you guys. But so last week, I hope y'all all are having like a really great week. I'm trying to have a really great week. Like honestly, I have I I, I kind of was going through the motions last week, and I don't know what's going on with me. It's not like I'm going through anything like in general, but I just felt like you know. Hold on, guys, because I feel like my eyelash is lifting. Hold on. So I'm not really sure what's going on with me, like I was saying. And even the eyelash is playing a part in it, okay? And when I say the eyelash is playing a part in it, ooh, it's actually really playing a part in it, literally, um, last week. So last week, I was just having, like, a rough week. I'm, um, It did start with, like, YouTube. It started with YouTube. And it wasn't really even YouTube itself. itself. It was just, like, views and sponsorships weren't like they used to be for me. Okay. Um, I started, I kept, I'm, I'm continuously getting these spam fake emails from, I don't know who's doing this, but they pretend to be various wig companies. Okay. They have pretended to be RPG show, best lace wigs, unice hair, icy hair, wow, African, um, who else? When I say they have tried me, they have tried me. I, I feel like I've gotten at least 30 of these messages. And when I say 30 of them, they are all identical. Copy and paste. Copy and paste. And at first it was like, okay, the first time I read it, it came through and I thought it was authentic. But then, you know, I start realizing you guys are asking me to be a collaboration with you and y'all are writing to me, y'all are emailing, emailing me like y'all never spoke to me before when granted I've done like a million videos for you. And that's what one, it, it triggered me. And then the see them writing things like we will give you five free products a month so you're going to send me five wigs a month wow okay that's a lot and you're going to do shout outs and all of this stuff it was just like all of this these promises and promises and it just sent, it seems so like for somebody who's never done this youtube thing and then they probably might have fell for it and at first i almost did girl okay at first i almost did and i started reading it and i said this is definitely got to be like some fake shit, right? Like it's gotta be until I started realizing and I started responding, like not even in a nice way. I just was responding because like, stop fucking with me. Stop fucking with me. They'll take the company's logo and put it and use it as their own logo. So it makes it look like it's really authentic. But you know, a lot of these companies that they're using, I've had relationships or I, I do have strong relationships with. So I know that these emails are fake. So I begin like so many of these fake ass emails and I, hopefully I'll remember to post it on the screen so that you guys could read the verbiage of it. But yeah, I've been getting a lot of these, like on a daily basis, I'll get like three or four of them. Okay. Um, and this has been going on for like over a month now and it's so, it's so irritating. Um, and so a lot of stuff has just really started been bothering me lately, but not only that, I just felt like, you know what? My life is not really going anywhere. Like this is what I'm feeling about myself. Like at the age that I am, I, you know what I'm saying? At the age of 50, I do want to have like a really secure, better life. You know what I'm saying? That's just me in a nutshell. Okay. And this is how I feel about my life. I want to have a really secure life. I want to fix my credit. I want to buy a house. I want to be able to leave my kids things. You know, granted, I have money. Um, it ain't that I'm going broke or anything because I do have funds. I do have the finances. I'm a good girl when it comes to saving money. Like, girl, yes, I save money. And when I get a sponsorship, whether it be for me for clothing, I'll pass it along to my daughter because in reality, it helps me not have to spend my money on buying school clothes and, and things like that. So whatever kind of videos that I get as sponsorship, if it could benefit my daughters in any way, like my daughter Mumsy, because she, she's, she's a teen, right? I will pass it along to her or I'll do it and then I'll pass the items along to her or I'll let her pick her own items out. And that's what I do. That's why you've seen Mumsy doing like a lot of the she in try ons and stuff because it's going to benefit me. I don't go anywhere. She goes to school. I want her to feel at her best. So, and that's going to benefit me for not spending my money. So girl, I do, I do save money. I don't know how a lot of these other like channels, they, they have way more views than me, which means their YouTube checks are way more than mine and they just be broke. Like I don't, I don't understand, but yeah, I'm a very, I'm a very paranoid person. And I think that's what a lot of my issues are contributing from like last week. I felt like I needed to do more. I needed to do better in my life. And I just felt like this is not for me anymore. And I hate to say that. And I really hate to feel that way about YouTube, but it's just not what I want to do like that all the time anymore. And I thought that this would be something that I would want to do for the longest, but in reality, it wasn't anything that I set out to do to be honest with you. You know, I did have a job. I was, I did have a career and I was doing very well at it. Yeah, yeah, they fired me or whatever. 
I, they had their reasons. Their reasons were I didn't want to work in the office. I didn't want to come a supervisor. You know, saying I was one of the top highest paid marketing reps for Fidelis. I was getting paid more than their supervisors and their managers. And I've been there for some years. You know what I'm saying? So, right. Why would I want to come in the office? I'm doing fine the way I'm doing my thing. So that was a lot of the reasons why they fired me. And when they did fire me, they hired three new people <laughs> and took my spot, which is hey, OK. So, you know, what I'm saying um, and this is what helped me along the way after I got fired. But, you know, I let it consume me and I just I just want to be able to do better. I want to do something else. You know what I'm saying? I want to do something else. And it's OK to want to do something else. Right. So I do want to do something else. And it has to do with, you know, at first I felt like I want to work from home because I'm so used to being home. And I don't know if I'm how I'm going to do working on the outside with people. You know what I'm saying? So I figured maybe if I do find a job, OK, which I am, if I do find a job, when I find a job, maybe I should just start up part time if it's not in home. If, it, if I have to leave the house, let me start up slowly because I don't want to be just thrown out there. And I got people up in my face all day long, regardless of where I work at. And then I started feeling like, oh, I'm, I don't I'm, I don't have the skill set. It was a lot. I was just going through a lot last week and I was vlogging about it. You know, I did do a video about it, so I will edit that and put it out there. But I know we all go through shit in life. And, you know, what I'm saying I don't know if I'm going through anything midlife crisis like but I just want a better life. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's all I want. So I, I had a rough week and I want this week to be better. And, and part of my rough week came with the lashes. So last week, you know what I'm saying? I, I put on my lashes and, you know, I feel like if I don't put on my lashes, I have like this older look about me. And so I feel like the lashes help me. And that's just my thing. I'm very critical of myself, you know, and all last fucking week, my lashes didn't want to go on properly. And then when they would stay, when I finally did get them on properly, you know, I have this thing with my eyes because one... I have very, they're not hooded, they're like fold overs, you know, so my lids fold over or whatever. So listen, as you get older, right? So as I put the lashes on, like within the minutes, my inner tear ducts are running, they're, they're, they're wet, my lash is lifting up like it is right now. And I think I kind of figured it out why, like why, why is that? So this is what I've been using for a very long time, which is the Shop Miss A eyelash glue. I love it. You can buy it in a three pack or you can, you can buy it, in, excuse me, you can buy it in a four pack or you can buy a single. I get it from um, Amazon because Amazon Prime gets your shit on time, right? It'll take like two days for it to get here. If I buy it from Shop Miss A, it's going to take a little bit longer. $10 for four of them. And this lasts me a while. Sometimes I have to get my daughter's one or whatever. That's no big deal. But as I was purchasing this, I noticed that this, the Kiss brand, was also being advertised on Amazon. And normally this one is like $7. It was like $2 and some change. I said, oh, I'm going to buy this, right? So I decided to use it. I kept trying to use it all last week. But I realized today, this must be making my eyes tear. Because I've been trying to put this on. I've removed my fucking lash like three times already for this eye. And it's this eye. And it still keeps tearing. So I had to take it off and put on the Shop Miss A. But then... I put this other Kiss one on, which is their Lash Couture Super Strong. And I don't know, it's starting to lift again. So I don't know what's going on with me. I don't know if it's my lids. I don't know if it's the eyelash glue that's making my eyes water because the Shop Miss A1 never did that. So I don't know. But every time I've been putting on lashes, this whole past week has just been trash. And it's pissing me off because I've been trying to look cute and I haven't been able to do that. And I get really frustrated sometimes. So anyway, we don't get into this real talk. If y'all have a real talk that y'all would like me to chit chat about, y'all go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Make sure to put in the subject line, real talk. And you can also use my other email address, which is aprilsrealtalk at gmail.com. Make sure to put in the subject line, real talk as well. If you want me to change the name of the people that you are talking about in your emails, go ahead and let me know. If you want to change them, you can do so. Let me know that as well. And it is what it is. Now, y'all already know, sometimes I do not. Well, you know what? I'll talk about about that after this commercial intermission. Let's get it.
you guys. So now y'all know I do have a, I have three emails, but I'm not going to read three of them today. Of course, I'm going to just do two. Um, there was going to be, um, the reason why I said three is because one of them came through, um, last night and it did say an emergency. So I wanted to read that to you guys, but as you guys know, I don't really like to skip ahead for anybody, but you know, if it's like an emergency or important, I will read it. And if I feel like it is worthy, then I'm definitely going to, you know what I'm saying? I'm definitely going to talk about it. But so let's get into this real talk. Now, first of all, I've never heard of this email before. So at first I thought it was like crazy, but she talked, she put it real talk. It's wild. Okay. Powered by anonymous, anonymous. Anonymous male, anonymous male or anonymous male. Okay. So I guess she didn't want me to know her email or what have you. That's fine. Okay. I'm, I would never, ever share your email with anybody. But anyway, hey, Diva, please call me Wanda for this real talk. All the names have been changed. Girl, I don't even know where to start with. I need your advice ASAP because things just got, a, got way out of control of work, at work today. So this was also sent to me last Wednesday. And the reason why I'm reading it because she said ASAP in the video excuse me, in the email, in the body of the email. Okay. So let me start over. All right. My eyes are irritating me and I bought new lashes and I can't even wear them, but wow. Okay. So please call me Wanda. Like she said, for this real talk, all the names have been changed. Girl, I don't even know where to start with. I need your advice ASAP because things just got way out of the control at work today. So I have been seeing this guy, let's call him Ron for a couple months now. He's tall, hot, and he makes me laugh. Sometimes he stays at my place and sometimes he goes to visit his mother, as he tells me, or as he has told me. Well, it turns out my boss, Bianca, has been feeling him too. And today we ended up fighting over him, like seriously fighting. I guess he has been staying at her place from time to time. And finally, she saw my pictures on his phone while he was asleep. It started with some petty comments, but then she started accusing me of going behind her back and I just lost it. We both started cussing each other out in front of everyone in the office. I'm talking real ugly words. She called me everything but a child of God and I wasn't about to let that slide. So I said some stuff I'm not proud of either. Next thing I knew, we were throwing hands. Girl, it was a mess. Both our wigs got pulled off in the middle of it. And there we were fighting like crazy, bareheaded in front of the whole office. I can't even describe the look on everyone's faces. And it gets worse. Someone must have called the police because, yes, the cops actually showed up. I was sitting there, no wig, breathing heavy with my boss doing the same while the police tried to figure out what happened. Now, I don't even know what to do. This whole thing blew up way more than I expected, and it's beyond embarrassing. I might lose my job, but honestly, I'm more worried about what comes next. Next, Should I lawyer up? Should I apologize? Should I just walk away from it all? I'm at a loss, and I really need your advice. Please, April, help me with your kind advice. Love you, Diva Wanda. Okay, y'all. We got to help Wanda out, okay? Okay, so we got Sister Diva Wanda here, and she done got in some real shit at work. Now, first of all, the one thing that I try not to do is try to befriend people where I work. That's just, I mean, that's what I try to do. Sometimes you can't help it because some people are just so amazing. They're so kind. They're so helpful. And you just sometimes just naturally click with people. And there's nothing wrong with that. As long as you realize that they are your real true friends and they have good intentions at heart for you. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you're at work. Like, Listen, when I get a job, I ain't going to, I ain't getting a job to make friends. I'm going to get a job because I'm trying to get that money. You know, I'm trying to make money. I'm trying to get to the bags. Like I say, bags, the S plural. I'm not going there to make friends. I'm not going there to make no type of relationships, whether it be female or man. I'm not trying to do that. But the one thing that I do understand is sometimes it can be hard. You know what I'm saying? We give ourselves, we, we, we allow people into our world. Sometimes, you know what I'm saying? We just click naturally with people and that's okay. But the one thing that I really try not to do is get into a sexual relationship with anybody at work. Now, granted, I've been there already. That's how I ended up meeting my husband. Okay. And it, I mean, that turned out cool, but he did start working there after a while. You know what I'm saying? We did work there together, but you know, he did get another job at the hospital and he stopped working there and I stayed working there. So it kind of worked out in our favor. But in the beginning of the relationship for like, maybe like, I want to say like, six or eight months of the relationship we were working together on the same shift but I was in the front of the office you know what I'm saying like I was the administrator I was sitting at the front of the office he was sitting in the back because he was marketing so and it was you know it was a telemarketing place so this is how we became you know with one and 
at first we we didn't let anybody know that we was dating one another and i don't really know how it got out i guess somebody might have seen us at lunch together that's what happened we would be at lunch together all the time so of course it did get out and we wasn't shy about it we wasn't trying to hide anything but we weren't running around the office talking about yeah we go together we go together we weren't doing shit like that you know what i'm saying we just we just was being our natural selves um, and I'll never forget, there's this one girl that worked there. She was the administrator before me. So as the administrator, well, she was a receptionist before me. And But my title got bumped up to receptionist, and then they just switched it to administrator because I did way more than she did. But anyway, when she would go to work, when she would work at the receptionist desk, um, her name was Tamika. She had freckles. Um, there wasn't as many freckles as mine. Um, what's her name, Tamika? Something like that. Some shit like that. Um, uh, some shit like that. I might be wrong about her name, but anyway... A lot of people thought she was my sister, but she was Hispanic. You know, she was, um, I, I really feel like she was, she was Dominican. She was Dominican. So anyway, she, and she was younger than me, but people did think that she was related to me because of the freckles, but we weren't related. Okay. We were not related. So anyway, when she would go to lunch, I would cover her at the front desk. You know what I'm saying? And people really didn't care for her too much. Her her attitude was just disgusting, nasty attitude. And she really wasn't doing much, much of anything. So she got kind of like shady with me because she felt like I took her man, but he was never yours to begin with. He was never your fucking man. He got out of jail. You was working the front desk. I was on medical leave, so I wasn't there when she when he first started working there. You let him hit, and that was it. He didn't really want to fuck with you like that. You invited him over so he could hit. You didn't even know him like that. So it's not that I took anything from you. He was never yours to begin with. He didn't stop fucking even speaking to you before I got back. And she felt some type of way about it. He even thought I was her sister. And I'm like, I know a relationship of hers. So, you know, that's how we became, he and I became friends way before we became a relationship, a thing. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it was cool. It was cool. We was cool about it. Now, we and her wasn't about to fight with each other. She didn't want to fight with me anyway. Okay. She didn't want to fight with me anyway. She was, she was, she was nasty attitude to people. You know what I'm saying? That would come in and want to get an application and people that worked there. But she wasn't about that life. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I'll, I'll be nasty. I'm not a nasty attitude to people that come in. But, bitch, I will read your ass. She's different nasty. I'm diff I'm I'm nice nasty. She's she's different nasty. She's just rude, nasty, and miserable. I was just, yo, please, if you disrespect me, I'm going to disrespect you. So we didn't have to have that altercation at work. And I would have never allowed her to get to that point. But Wanda, on the other hand, I understand where Wanda is coming from with this because she did say, her boss was feeling him too. But if you feeling somebody doesn't mean that you are with them. You understand what I'm saying? So Wanda's boss was a little bit, in my opinion, a little bit wrong because just because you was feeling him to me, I don't feel like that was like telling me that you was fucking with him. Oh, I'm feeling him. That means you got a crush on him to me. When people say, oh, they be feeling a person. That means to me, if you haven't said anything to him about how you feeling about him, then I feel like you had a, she had a crush on him. And Wanda was not aware that she was fucking with the dude either. Because like he said, he gonna go stay at his mama house. So he stayed with Wanda sometimes and then he would stay at his mother house. So he said, but in reality, he was not staying at his mother house. He was staying at the boss's house. So <laughs> these two women, here we got these two women at the job place, literally fist fighting each other over some dude that ain't even worth shit. He a bum. He a bum. He a bum ass nigga because he stayed with you some days and then some days he stayed with his mother. He he ain't stay in his own place, Wanda. He he have his own place. He have his own place to stay in because that's the that's me. Curiosity kills the cat. But I want to know if you had him staying over your place and then he told you he went to stay in his mom's house. Where where's his house at? Where where's this dude's house at? So he worked with y'all, but he had nowhere to live. You know what I'm saying? He was just smashing the boat for y'all, but he had nowhere to live. Girl, listen, y'all had a fight over somebody that really wasn't worth it. And it's too bad that y'all didn't realize that before y'all started throwing blows and losing hair over a motherfucker. Like, seriously. Now y'all got the cops there and you wondering, should you apologize? Should you lawyer up or should you just walk away? I don't really feel like you need to lawyer up because y'all both put the paws on each other. Y'all both sat there looking stupid with no wigs on. And I'm probably sure your boss doesn't have a job neither because just because she's the boss, she doesn't own the establishment. So I hope not. And if she does own the establishment, that's cool and all. But how is she going to sue you for fucking somebody that worked with you because she was doing the same or for putting your hands on her because she did the same to you? Or for cursing her out, well, she did the same to you. So there's really no need in lawyering up and suing because y'all did the same thing to one another, which was clownish. And now y'all both sitting there with no hair on, huffing and puffing, and you wondering, should you go back to work or should you apologize? Apologize for what? Wanda, what do you need to apologize for? Y'all both 
were being shady to one another. And not only were y'all both being shady to one another during the altercation, but it says here that your boss was the one that started basically nitpicking at you because she came across your pictures in his phone while he was at her house asleep. Okay, so in reality, you probably would have never known that she was fucking him if she wouldn't have came out with her comments, her indirects and directs at the time of work. Listen, there's no need to apologize, boo. What you need to do is go find yourself another job because you got two people, two enemies that work at the place of a business that you really don't need to be at. You got this bum, bum ass nigga who ain't got no place to stay, obviously, because if he did, he wouldn't be staying at your house and just say he gone, go stay at his mother's house. And then he really going to stay with your boss. He ain't had no house of his own. Like, that's what I'm trying to figure out. He must have didn't have a, a place of his own. So you wondering, should you lawyer up? Nah, girl, you ain't got to lawyer up. But if she trying to sue you, then maybe you might want to. But there's no reason to sue you because y'all both did the same thing to each other. And if you feel like you got your job still, girl, you know you ain't got your motherfucking job still. And even if you still had the job, I wouldn't even want to work there no more, to be straight honest with you. Because you got this dude that's probably still going to be there working. Because he, in reality, he really didn't do anything against... You know what I'm saying? The job policy. Like, he didn't steal anything. He didn't put his hands on anybody. He didn't disrespect anybody. He didn't use any foul language. It was just the two of you ladies. So, in reality, dude might still have a job. But me, personally, as a person, I wouldn't want to work there no more. I wouldn't want to work around her, and I wouldn't want to work around him. Fuck everybody else at the place of business that you feel embarrassed by. That's cool and all. And if you're embarrassed because your wig came on, baby. People's wigs come off every fucking day. It's a thing. People get their wigs pulled off every fucking day. People pull their own fucking wigs off out in public every fucking day. So please don't feel embarrassed because you had your hair pulled off. Do you feel embarrassed because your boss was running her motherfucking mouth? That might be it too, but you was running yours too. I wouldn't even feel embarrassed about that because shit happens and shit happens. And I've defended myself. You're not about to stand here and cuss me the fuck out. I don't give a fuck if who's boss are you. You're not God. You're not God's boss. You're not about to stand here and cuss me out. Mm -mm. So I wouldn't feel embarrassed about that neither. I wouldn't feel embarrassed about none of this shit, but I just wouldn't want to be working with two people that ain't really nothing but snakes and just don't mean no good for me, especially him and your boss too. Like she, she supposed to be your boss, which means she's supposed to set an example. She's supposed to kind of like, I want to say mentor y'all because she's above y'all. She's over y'all. So she's trying to, she's supposed to lead y'all to do the right thing. Okay, to do your job correctly, to do the right thing, to learn how to level up so that way y'all could go higher up in the food chain. I mean, I'm just saying that's what she's there to do. But it seemed like she didn't do that. She became a child. Okay, an immature fucking teenager and started nitpicking, throwing underhand shots at you and then throwing directs like indirect and directs like let's let's we don't got to be indirect. But bitch, you're not going to come to me directly. Neither with no fucking foul ass mouth at work. I don't give a fuck who boss you are, bitch. I don't give a fuck if you own this whole block or this building. What you're not going to do is be disrespectful. So I wouldn't apologize for shit, Wanda. I wouldn't apologize for shit. What I would do is find me a new job. That's what I would do. And I would leave homeboy the fuck alone because obviously he don't give a fuck about near one of y'all bitches, okay? He don't give a fuck about you and he damn sure don't give a fuck about your boss. And I'm just saying this straight up as a woman, okay? As a woman, to you, there's no need for you to apologize apologize. Now I will apologize to a person when I feel like it's deemed necessary. Like I don't go around apologizing to people. If I've said something to you directly on purpose, I'm not going to do that. If I told you that you're getting on my fucking nerves and, or if I told you, bitch, you be, you a nasty ass hoe, I'm not going to apologize for it. Cause there's a reason why I called you a nasty ass hoe is because I feel like you are, you know what I'm saying? I don't really call people out of their names just because just to do that, I'm going to be, I'm going to say something that I totally mean and I mean that shit. So I'm not going to apologize, but I do apologize to people if I've said something that have hurt your feelings and I might've said it the wrong way, I'm going to say something. But if you make me mad and me and you are arguing on purpose, on purpose, and you started with me, bitch, I ain't coming back to apologize to you. Never. Never. And everything I said to you, I meant that shit. Okay. I meant it. I don't give a fuck if you ain't a hoe. I said it. It means I meant it. Okay. That's what the fuck it is. I don't feel like you need to apologize to her. Like seriously, what would you apologize for? For calling you out your name? For fucking somebody that's not your man? He ain't even your man, Wanda. So like, what are you, what are you really apologizing for? Because in, in the end, you're apologizing for what? For calling her out her name? Well, she called you out yours. For putting your hands on her? Well, she put her hands on you too. So in reality, y'all can apologize to each other if y'all want to. Y'all can apologize for being dumbasses and allowing some man to come in between y'all. But then again, it's like, did y'all really allow him to come in between y'all? He told y'all both something different, which made y'all believe that she'll probably was both something special in his eyes. Now, you didn't tell your boss you was fucking him. And I don't think you needed to tell her that because that's not her business. Now, even if your boss said to you, oh, he's fine. Oh, he's fine. 
fine. That means she was feeling him. That's cool, but that still didn't mean that you needed to divulge your fucking life issues or your situation ship with your boss about you and him. Just because your boss might have said he's handsome. That's not your that's not your boss's business. What you do out of the office after off the hours is not your boss's business or anybody else's business where you work at. That's in my opinion. So if your boss didn't know about you fucking him, then there's nothing that you can do about that because you don't have to go to work and broadcast it for anybody. It's the same thing with your boss. You didn't have to go to, she doesn't have to go to work and broadcast it neither, nor did she. But y'all found out. She found out first. And she found out while she was not at work. She found out while she was at home, while dude was sleeping, she went through his phone. And then she brought that shit to work. What do they say? Don't bring your shit from home to work. That's what they always say. And she shouldn't have. What your boss should have did, done was pulled you aside. Hey, girl. Hey, Wanda. Um, can I have a word with you And after work? Can I have a word with you after work? You know what I'm saying? So that way, what y'all are discussing is not doing work hours. You understand what I'm saying? Your boss should have been woman enough and for some, on some real shit. Wanda, your boss should have been real woman enough and approached you when it was five o'clock or whatever time y'all end the day and said, hey, Wanda, after work, can you and I go out and get a drink together? Or can I have a word with you outside of work? That's all she should have did. That's all she should have did. But instead, she brought that, that energy to work. She brought that energy to work. And then she, she made it her business to let you know that she saw your pictures. She made her business to let you know that she brought that energy to work. So what were you supposed to do? You know what I'm saying? Wait until five o'clock or whatever time y'all get off and be like, all right, bitch, I'm going to see you. Like how we used to do. Oh, I'm going to wait till after school to fuck you up. That's what we used to do. We, once you become an adult, it doesn't work like that anymore. You confronted me here. I'm going to allow you to, I'm going to confront your ass the fuck back. And also, how did she confront Wanda? She didn't seem like she confronted her in any nice way. She confronted her with some shady shit and started talking grimy to her when she should have just approached her nicely and said, can I speak to you after work? There's nothing for you to apologize for. If anybody want to lawyer up and sue, maybe it should be you, Wanda, because like I said, she brought that energy to work and she knew what the fuck she was doing. I feel like your boss used it, used, excuse me, used it, used her authority as a bullying tactic, in my opinion. That's in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? But I don't feel like you need to apologize to anybody. What I do feel like you need to do is erase them both out of your life. You know what I'm saying? Go about your business. If she is not the owner of the company, then I feel like you should speak to somebody that's above her. It's that way you can settle your grievances. Even if you don't decide to go back, even if you do decide not to go back to work, I still feel like you should speak to somebody that's above your, your boss. So that way you can settle your grievances and move on. It's always great to move forward in life with a clean slate. Sometimes you can't. But in this case scenario, I really feel like if your boss does not own that company, then I feel like you need to go above her and settle your grievances and allow them to see what really transpired and how your boss handled it. So that way, maybe maybe you can stay and she can be gone and he too. Or maybe you just settle your grievances and move forward with a different job and a different environment. That's in my opinion, but I wouldn't fuck with neither one of them. And I wouldn't apologize. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't chuck it up as a loss neither, but I would definitely speak to the higher ups above her and let them know that this is not really actually your fault. And then in reality, when you think about it, it's not, it's not. You, you good, Wanda. You good. I, I feel like this, that pro you know something though, I've had an issue like that at work. Um, a couple of times. Okay. A motherfucking couple of times with the people that are above me. Um, I used to work like forever ago. I used to work at family dollar. Um, I, th I have one child at the time, right? Yeah, I did have, I had one child at the time when I was working at family dollar and, um, Sue was her name, my boss. And I was working at the register and I don't know if she had a bad day or if I was having a bad day that day. I just really couldn't remember, but I guess I wasn't moving fast enough for her. Okay. And I was, I never forget. I was scanning some rubbing alcohol a bottle of rubbing alcohol and some other things for my customer. Now, you know, in, my, in the neighborhood, it was black owned. Like the the, the, dollar, the family dollar was black. Like it was in a black neighborhood. So everybody that would come there was predominantly black. Sue was white. Okay. And she was cool in the beginning. All right. But I remember her, she came out of her little office booth and started running her mouth to me, like in front of the customer. And the black woman that was my customer at the time, she was older than me. She was saying, she turned around and said, you are disrespectful to her. You don't do that in front of people and customers. And Sue still began 
to run her mouth. I'm trying to remember what the fuck she said because I cannot remember what she said to me, but I remember the older black woman sticking up for me and I just was quiet and because I needed that job, you know what I'm saying? And she still continued to run her mouth. And at that point, I remember not finishing the sale, like finishing, because I took that goddamn bottle of rubbing alcohol and I chucked it at her. And she was like, you're fired. You're fired. Now, I said, you fat white bitch, I will fuck your ass. I got all up in her face, too. I sure did. Threw some shit at her, knocked some shit down, told her I'll fuck her ass up, come outside. And I went home. That was, that was one job, okay? And then at Fidelis, I did have an issue with somebody that was my friend before the whole entire time of me working there. She helped me get the job. Not really even helped me get the job. She just told me the job was hiring. I got the job my goddamn self, you know what I'm saying? But she became a supervisor. And I think I told y'all this story before. She became a supervisor, not mine, not my supervisor, but we were still friends. Like I would go over to her house and hang out with her. And you know what I'm saying? Shit like that. She quit the job. She quit working at Fidelis and went to work for WellCare, another health insurance company, and then came back. And when she came back, she became supervisor. You know what I'm saying? When she left, she was a marketing rep. When she came back, she came back as a supervisor. So she felt like because she and I were good friends, we were like the best of friends, damn near, that I could spy on her marketing reps because we didn't work in the office. Like marketing reps, we didn't work in the office. Like we would come in the office, but it was our job to be in the field. You know what I'm saying? So she felt like I should spy on her marketing reps and see if they're really supposed to be doing what they're doing or are they at home. Girl, it wasn't my job to do that. And I let her know that. She tried to basically blackmail me, okay, with being her undercover um, informant. But I, I don't know, Alice. I don't think you realized at the time that I'm not that motherfucking person. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't understand. Like, she's a few years older than me. And I don't know if she tried to sun me or what have you. But I guess she felt like because I was always smooth sailing with her that I wasn't going to be the April that she has seen me be to other people. Well, that motherfucking day, I was that April. Okay? I surely the fuck was. In the office with her, I was that motherfucking April. And then she tried to make it seem like it was my fault and I shouldn't have, you know, disrespect to her like that because she's a supervisor. Bitch, I don't give a fuck who you are at the end of the day. I will fuck your ass up in this office too. You already know what time it is. You know, so she did go and tell on me and I told on her too. And the, the Peter, the, the head honcho, he did make us apologize to each other, but I still never fucked with her like that again. So I don't know. People, that's why I say I don't really try to go to work to be friends with anybody. But I, as for Wanda's sake... I really feel like she doesn't owe anybody an apology, but I really feel like she should talk to everybody else who's above her manager or boss and, and get her ass in trouble or not even to get her, her, her boss in trouble, but just to cover her own self. And that's what I would do. OK, that's what I would do. Y'all let Wanda know what y'all would do in this circumstance. But as for me, if that were me, Wanda, I would definitely cover myself and I would make it be known to whoever's above your boss, supervisor, manager, whatever her title was, how it all went down. Because you don't need nobody else stirring the pot. I definitely would. And don't feel embarrassed because shit happens. She brought that on herself. She brought that on you. What are you supposed to do? I would feel more embarrassed if I didn't defend myself. Point blank, period. Okay? So let's move on to this next one. You guys. So I don't know if y'all know, but today I'm about to make some ribs for dinner. Barbecue ribs. Okay? Making some barbecue ribs today. I did make some on Saturday. Um, I made a pan of them. And they are so good. We like to go to Albertsons and get them. Now, I don't know if you guys have an Albertsons in your town. But Albertsons is sister store, sister store, sister store to Safeway, okay? Safeway groceries. And I like them because, but both of them, they always have the same thing on sale. But they're very high priced. If you're going to go grocery shopping, I wouldn't suggest going there. But their sales are amazing. You can get 97 cents pound chicken, okay? And the limit is 10 pounds chicken breast, boneless, skinless chicken breast. So you get 10 of them. And them things are huge. So we'll get those, but they have some ribs on sale this week too. Um, rack of ribs. By the time y'all see this video, it'll be over because the last day is, I think, Tuesday or Wednesday. I mean, so, I mean, y'all might want to try, but I mean, I'm just putting that out there. If you don't have, if you have an Albertsons, get the app on your phone so that way you can get the sale prices. Definitely worth it. So I, I got to get cooking, you know, I got to get cooking with the, with the ribs and stuff. You know, my, my daughter Tati expects the ribs tonight. I expect the ribs. Okay. So <laughs> let's read this next one. So this is the one that I was saying. Um, it was basically, it didn't say emergency. My bad. It didn't say emergency. It said, real talk, please help me emergency. So that's what it did say. Okay. Real talk, please help me emergency. Okay. So yes. Hey, April, my name is Kathy, a woman in her late forties. And I have something weighing heavy on my heart for 
the past years now. First, I want to say I felt the need to speak my truth after hearing your recent Real Talks. I'm so glad that you are able to be understanding when you hear a person's story, whether you are in agreement with it or not. I am so appreciative for your understanding. I have been quiet for so long. I will speak to other close friends in my life about what has gone through but what has been going through, but mainly I prefer to keep it to myself because I dare not let anyone judge me for who I am or what a particular person in my family may have done. I live in Seattle now and have been for some years. And throughout my childhood, I was mistreated by my stepfather, my mother's husband. I witnessed a lot growing up, some things I really wish I could unsee. I wish my mother knew her worth back then because her and I's life would be much different had she known the difference in her worth. Make a very long story short, my mother got with my stepdad when I was about six or seven, and it seemed like he moved into our home fast. April, he was so mean to my mother, just mean, and I couldn't understand why she would put up with his shit. The cops seemed to show up at our home quite often. I guess neighbors probably called because of all the yelling and fighting they would hear. He seemed like he had some type of mental issues because how can anyone be so mean to another person? He would drink a lot and then fight my mother and I began taking up for my mother as I got older. I just wish she would have let me go. I just wish she would have let him go instead of keeping him around. April he finally lost it one night and beat my mother so bad. I am so thankful she survived, but she was so bad off in the hospital for a couple of months while I had to spend those months in foster care, but with this amazing family to whom to this day I still have contact with. April, every eight years for the past 20 years now, I have had to go to the parole board and give a victim's impact statement so this man, whom my mother loves so much, doesn't get released on parole. I am in my late 40s, and this man has been put away when I was 14 years old. He received 25 years to life on parole for how bad he beat my mother and me somewhat. Once his parole time came up, the first hearing, which was about 20 years after serving the 25 year sentence, I have had to go and speak my piece about why he shouldn't be let out. I have been doing this for a while, along with my mother, who has remained single since that horrible day. April, can I say that this has become a chore in my life at this point? I don't mean to sound like I don't care because I actually really do. And it's wrong for me to feel like this. I just wish that this man would pass along already. I don't have time to continue going through this. I just wish that he would pass away already. I have never disliked anyone so much in my life and I don't have hate in my heart for anyone. But for him, he would be better off in the dirt six feet under. I hate to see my mother have to go through appearing at the parole hearing. I hate to have to see her mentally exhausted from the trauma he has caused. I just wish him to meet his maker or will he, or should I say that, or shouldn't I say that because he and I do not have the same makers. I just wish he'd go. Do you think I am wrong for feeling this way? Thinking about another person's demise in this way. I am sorry for saying emergency in the subject because I don't like skipping any lines, but I am just going through it and I have to go to this hearing soon and I just needed someone to talk to. And after hearing your last week's talk about the guy who was in jail, I just couldn't get any of this off of my mind. I hope you can understand and thank you for being that ear for me. Kathy. So we got Kathy right here who is going through like a really traumatic experience, like seriously, a traumatic experience. And first of all, I want to say I commend you and I love your strength because if you yourself can take it upon yourself to sit at a parole hearing and give your impact statement time after time, then I commend you because it's hard for a lot of people. And sometimes a lot of people won't even show up, which in return allows the criminal, the inmate, to be released back into civilization. And I feel like we, we need to be very vigilant and do our part in keeping those that don't belong amongst us we need to keep those people behind bars. So I commend you, Kathy, on being a strong individual along with your mom. I want to I want to send love to you and your mom because I can only imagine how you must have felt having to live with someone like that and then to have to be taken away from your mom for like a few months just so your mom can heal. Like, can you imagine you guys going through something and, and I'm pretty sure I know for a fact that Kathy is not the only woman that has gone through this in her life you know what I'm saying there might be somebody else who's watching this that has gone through the same thing but I can only I, I can't even imagine I can't imagine having to go through something like that I want to say this I understand how you may feel because it's a task you may feel like it's a task going to the parole hearing 
and you may feel like it's taken away from your lives. But in reality, you're doing the right thing. We don't want to allow this man back on the street. I have seen so many different documentaries because y'all know I love to watch the ID channel with all of these criminal documentaries. And I've seen quite a few of them, quite a few of them, where these men have unalived women. Men have unalived women now to these days. Like, I don't know what's going on with the men these days. They seem to like to take it out on women. They seem to like to bash women a lot. Men are bashing women left and right now. I, I, I see men on YouTube that have their own channels and they just be bashing the fuck out of women. You know what I'm saying? Saying how they single mothers, how, you know, like you guys play a part in us being single mothers too. Let's just be for real. Let's just be for real. They say things about their hair, the lashes, the body alterations. It's a lot that men have been voicing their opinions about. And that's fine too. Everybody's entitled to voice their opinion. But I just been feeling like lately men have really been getting out of character sometimes. And I'm not here to bash them, but I just have been noticing like a lot of these documentaries and I've seen it even on like my feed. Men have alive their girlfriends for leaving them. Men have alive their wives for leaving them. Men have alive women that they really don't even know for not responding back to text messages or even responses as giving the phone number out. They have done brutal things or brutal attacks to them. So I don't really feel like we need to let these type of men back on you know, out in public, walking amongst us, or anybody for that matter, whether it be man or woman. So I understand how you may feel, Kathy, about allowing this to be part of your life, but you need to realize that you need to continue to do your part. And I wouldn't feel bad, like, I don't want you to feel bad. Like, she, Kathy wants to know, should she feel bad about wishing this man to be six feet under? Why would you feel bad about that? He took something from you. He took something from your mother. Why would you feel bad about wanting him to be unalive? Like, let's be for real. Like, I'm not saying you're a bad person for feeling that way. No, I wouldn't. He's done something so traumatic to you and your mom that you guys have to live with this for the rest of your life. So why would you want this man to be walking on earth? Like, let's be for real. Like, in reality, I would, if that were me, if I were in your shoes, yeah, I wouldn't want him to be on his face of this earth either. I wouldn't feel like he deserved to be on this earth as well. So don't feel bad about your feelings towards him. Don't feel bad about wishing he wasn't around. Don't feel bad about wishing he was in the dirt. Don't feel bad about anything like that. These are your feelings. These are your true feelings. These are your feelings because of what he has done, what he has taken from you. So why would you feel bad about that in any way, shape or form? Girl, no. Okay. Your feelings are valid and your feelings are natural. You are a human being just like your mom and just like him. And for someone to do something so, so mean and wicked to take from you and to put your mother in harm's way, why wouldn't you feel that way? Like that, what you feel is basically normal. And I understand it's, it probably does feel like you have to relive this because I'm not sure I've never been to a parole hearing and I'm not sure if you see the parolee, I'm not sure if you see the inmate sitting there. I would hope that that person is really not sitting with with you as you are trying to deny him access to parole. I would hope that they're not in the same room with you. I don't think they are from what I've seen in documentaries, but I get the part where you feel like it's taken from you and it's taken from your lives. I get that part. You know what I'm saying? But you, you do need to continuously do this until he ain't no longer here, until he is under the dirt, until he is with his maker. I'm pretty sure his maker is going to be down below the dirt. You know what I'm saying? Most of the time they are with people like this. And you know, like she was saying, she feels like he had a mental issue because he was just so mean and nasty. You know something? I can't stand to see people blame it a lot of times on mental issues. They always say, well, that's because I'm mental or I haven't taken medication. Some people are just mean for no fucking reason. And it is what it is. Some people are just mean for no fucking reason. Okay. And that's them. That's their personality it has nothing to do with their mental. It just has to do with them as a person. You know what I'm saying? Some people are just mean for no reason. And just, we have to realize that not everybody has a mental health issue that goes around beating on women. These people understand understand and know what the fuck they doing. So it's not always a mental issue. It's just that that's who they are. That's their character. That's them as a person. Some people are bullies and that's just them. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel bad for them when they go to jail. I don't feel bad for them when they don't get out of jail. I don't feel bad for them because you did the crime. Bitch, your ass need to do the goddamn time. So it's not always a mental issue. So he might not have had a mental issue, Kathy. He just probably is just me for no fucking reason. You did say he was a drunk. He was drinking all the time. Then when he would get drunk, he would be mean and nasty to your mom. My mom's brother was like that. Okay. My mother has a brother. All right. And he's a drunk too. He's a drunk too. And he's been a drunk since he was like 15 years old. My mother's mom died when she was 10 or 11. I think she was 11. Okay. At the time. And my mom's brother and my mom's father, they all lived in the apartment that my mom still resides in. 
my grandfather would allow my uncle to have parties, drink at an age of 15 and 16 years old. So that's how he became a drunk. He ain't had no mental issues. From him becoming a drunk, he then became a fucking crackhead. All right, straight facts. He became a crackhead and he ain't had no mental issues. But before he became a crackhead, he was a drunk, right? And he started messing with the woman who was my mom's best friend, my aunt Ann. And they ended up, I don't know if they ever got married. I, did they get married? I don't know if they got married. I can't remember that part. I don't know if my uncle married her or not. I don't know. But they, they had two children together and they were together for some time. My aunt Anne is a nurse. My mom and her were best friends. And, you know, my mom, um, I'm not sure if my mom introduced my aunt Anne to my mother's brother. I don't even call him my uncle, but for this video, he'll be my uncle. So I'm not sure. I don't think my mother introduced him. He just so happened to see my mom with her. But he would get drunk and he would be mean and nasty to my aunt Anne as well. He had no mental issues. It's just who he was as a person. And to this day, he's like that. Of course, he's not with my aunt Anne anymore. I don't even allow him to talk to my mother, okay? Because he feels like he's entitled to receive things from my mom, such as furniture, buy him this, do this, do that for him. He's a fucking drunk. I'm not sure if he's still a drunk. I'm, I don't think he is or whatever, but he's a, just a mean, nasty person. And that's who he is. Like he would call my mom up and request her to buy him shoes from him because he didn't have the funds to do it himself. He wasn't mental. He's not a mental person. He's just a fucking mean, nasty person. And I don't allow him to talk to my mother. And when I tell you I don't allow him, I don't allow him. I had to put him in his place a couple of times. And the last time I put him in his place he ain't never called my mother since you know what i'm saying he's not mental he's just a mean nasty fucking person so i don't think all of these people that do these things are mental they just they just are who the fuck they are period point blank they are who they are and it's sad to say that they are who they are i'm not saying oh it would be better off for them to be mental because no it wouldn't but you know what i'm saying i don't think that that he was mental i think that he was just a mean nasty person like you stated and where he's at is where he fucking belongs and i'm sorry that you feel that he's taken away from you because he has and he did but don't allow him to make you continuously feel that way you understand what i'm saying do your part and feel good about doing your part Feel good about going to that parole hearing and feel good about telling them that he's a piece of shit that doesn't belong with society. Feel good that you and your mom have allowed him to continuously stay behind bars where he belongs. Feel good about that shit because I would. Feel good that you are helping other women in this world stay safe from him. Feel good that you are allowing other people in general to be away from him. And feel good that his family may be suffering because he's not around. Feel good about that shit. Because I'm pretty sure that all those times that he was being mean and nasty to you and your mother, I'm pretty sure it made him feel good. Because bullies, they feed off of other people's pain. They feed off of other people's hurt. It makes them feel good. It gives them energy. You know what I'm saying? It does. Because why would they continuously do that to a person? People be mean just because they be mean for no fucking reason to people. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm not saying we should go around hurting these people that are bullies and be mean. But I feel like where he's at is where he belongs. And he needs to stay there. Now, he must have did something totally brutal for her mom to have to be put in a hospital for two months over a, for a couple of months. She said a couple of months. It may be more than two. A couple is two to me, but you know what I'm saying? But whatever he did to her mom, he did it with intent. He did it on purpose. He beat her so bad to where she had to be in a hospital. Fuck him. Fuck where he's at. He belongs where he's at. And when he's, his day comes, he's definitely going to meet his maker. But I, if I were you, Kathy, I would never feel bad about wishing anything that is not positive on him. I wouldn't. I'm not saying that we got to go around and be negative towards people because we shouldn't. But when a person has done you so wrong and has done you so bad that it has traumatized your entire life, her mother has not had a boyfriend in forever. The girl, this happened when she was 14 and she's in her late forties. God, that's a long time. So this man has traumatized her mother's life for that long. That's, that's fucked up. That's like really, that's, that's fucked up. That's the only word that I could find to use. But that is, that's really messed up. Like he has traumatized this woman's life for that long. He belongs where he belongs. And I'm sorry that you feel this way. And like you said, you needed someone to talk to. We all need someone to talk to. We all need an ear to listen to. But I want to give you this advice because maybe you don't have this in your life. And I feel like we all could benefit from this, which is a therapist. Now, 
<clears throat> excuse me, granted, I did have a therapist. She got pregnant on me and <laughs> started to live her life. So, you know, I don't have one anymore. Um, do I think that I could benefit from it? Of course I do. I've had a bad week all last week crying over shit, being a, being the hardest critic on myself. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, I could definitely benefit from um, having a therapist because we all do need someone to talk to, somebody who is biased, somebody that's really not going to judge us. We all need that. And maybe that was that for you because I would never dare judge anybody. I try not to judge people. You know what I'm saying? I really do. But I, I, sometimes I, I will. I will judge a person. But for those who don't deserve it, I don't really try to judge you. But for like someone like him, okay. Oh, yes. I'm definitely going to judge you. I mean, what else is there for me to do but judge you? I, you know, I try to be very understanding to people and the things that they do. Just like, you know what I'm saying? Just like Wanda, for instance. I, I feel like what she did was 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 right. You put your hands on me, bitch. I'm gonna put my hands back on you. What I'm supposed to do? What? And wait until after work and be like, I'm not gonna hit you back because you're my boss. Nah, bitch. I'm gonna hit you the fuck back. You disrespect me. I'm gonna disrespect you back. I don't care who you are. You don't disrespect anybody and they feel like you're not gonna get disrespected the fuck back. Okay. So when you do the crime, yeah, you gonna have to do the time. And I and I feel like you are doing the right thing, Kathy. And you may have a fear of going, maybe very uncomfortable. I know that sometimes, you know, I watch a lot of TV, so I don't know if this is a thing always, but I have seen quite a few movies where the person has had to go to the jail to do the parole hearing. I have seen that. And that may be just on TV. I don't really know. You know what I'm saying? But, and like I said, I feel like everybody needs to speak to somebody. Everybody needs an ear. Everybody, you don't have to go in person to see a therapist. I used to do mine with, on, you know, through video. So I would speak with her every two weeks. In the beginning, it was every week. You know, I'm, I'm not afraid to share my, my shit, but I mean, you know, it, a lot of it had to do with me and like, you know, losing my son and, um, you know, just not happy, not wanting to be in a relationship with anybody ever again in life. You know, those are my things. And I mean, I still feel the way I feel about certain shit, but I just feel like we all can benefit from speaking with somebody that who's, who's you know, unbiased and won't judge us. I feel like that's very beneficial for everybody. But I also feel it's very beneficial, Kathy, for you to continue, you and your mom to continue going as you guys have been to the parole hearing. He don't deserve to be out in society. He don't deserve anything, okay? When you when you beat anybody brutally, man or woman, when you do that to anybody, you don't deserve to be part of society anymore, in my opinion. You know, when you hurt and harm a person intentionally, I just really feel like you don't deserve to be amongst us. You know what I'm saying? I feel like you've done what you've done, and therefore, you should, you should yourself take the time and do your time because you did the crime. Some people just don't be, deserve to be released. And I don't know, but some people feel like, well, they're a different person because they've been in jail this long, et cetera, et cetera. I feel like they're a better person. They changed. They're not the same person. But yeah, you in jail. You spent those years in jail. What the fuck you expect? The person is in jail. They're doing their time. Why would they misbehave in jail? Like, let's just be for real. Like, yeah, do people do misbehave in jail at times. Yeah, they do. Okay. They get into fights. They misbehave. Okay. But, um, do you really think that they are doing it intentionally? Ain't nobody going to go to jail and, and do that same shit that they did in the streets while they're in jail. Hell fucking no. So yeah, they are a different person in jail. Of course, they're behind bars. They're being punished. Of course. Not saying that everybody gets out and does good and not saying that everybody gets out and does bad, but I just don't believe in everybody. You know what I'm saying? If I feel like you're a mean, nasty, evil, wicked person and you've done this already several times, then I feel like you're going to do it again when you get out. Okay? Period. I just do. Yeah, you might not have done it in jail because you don't have any victims to do it to in jail. Like, yeah, there are other inmates, but I guarantee you those inmates ain't going to allow you to make them their victim. There are some that you may be able to groom, but ain't not everybody going to allow that shit. And if you do it in jail, you're going to definitely reap the consequences. So, yeah, they're going to be on their best behavior while in jail. That's like somebody telling you, well, I haven't drunk. I haven't had a drink in so long. Yeah, like my ex. He used to, he used to say that to me. Well, I haven't had a drink in like so long. Hmm, dude, you was in jail. Well, yeah, you gonna really count those years? <laughs> you gonna really count those years? Like, I'm not gonna take that from you, but let's just be for real. You ain't had a drink in so long because you was in jail. But I guarantee you, I'll ask, if you wasn't in jail, you would be drinking still, okay? It is what it is. People are who they are at times. And you know what I'm saying? Like, I hate to say this about some people, but you see people for who they really the fuck are. Like, straight up, like, there are some mean, nasty, evil people in this world, and that's who the fuck they are. You know what I'm saying? It's not a mental thing. It's not a mental thing. It's just 
who they are. And we have to realize that like, we can't always use the mental health issue card for everybody. Like, I don't feel like we should because people be overusing that shit and abusing that shit. Like they use that shit just so they could get less time or no time at all. You know what I'm saying? This is what people do. And I don't feel like we should continuously do this shit. You did the shit. You did the crime. You knew what the fuck you was doing. Therefore, your ass need to be in jail. Some people be trying to use that mental health shit when in reality, you knew who you was doing it to. You picked on the person you was preying on. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you, you choose your battles. People choose their battles. They choose who to pick on. They choose who to beat up on. They choose who to disrespect to. They choose this shit. You know what I'm saying? Some people try to use the little people, the meek people, the weak people to pick on, to bully, to beat on. You know what I'm saying? They, they know their battles. They choose their battles wisely. You know what I'm saying? These are the mean, evil, wicked people that do this shit. Therefore, this is not a mental issue. This is just who the fuck they are. Let's, let, we're going to use Diddy as an example. I don't even really want to talk about him because he is who he is. There are some people who don't believe that he has anything to do with this. There are some people that believe in him. There are some people who believe he's been set up. There is no way that this can all be a setup when there are other people that have come out to speak against him. Okay. To speak against him. So let's just use him as example. You, so you think that he's mental he has mental health issues because he's sex trafficking, drugging people, doing things to harm people. He doesn't have no mental issues. He is a monster. He is who he is. He does what he does because he can and he feels like it and he wants to. And that is him. That is his personality. That is his character. That is who he is. Not mental health issues. This is the person he is. So I get that there are people that may do things that are mentally ill. But Kathy said she feels like maybe he's mentally ill because he's just been so mean. Nah, Kathy, that's just who the fuck he is. So therefore, don't feel bad. Don't feel bad for keeping him where he's at. Don't feel bad for putting him back and not getting parole. Don't feel bad for wishing him to be six feet under. Don't feel bad for none of that shit. Release your fucking hurt. Talk how you feel. And continue on with your life. Don't allow him to make your life any worse. Don't, let, don't allow him to win. You know what I'm saying? Don't allow him to win. Don't allow him out. Don't allow him to get to you. Don't allow him to win. He is where he is and he belongs there. And I don't wish any harm on nobody. You know what I'm saying? But in this circumstance, if that was my mother, you know what I'm saying? Oh, hell yeah. I'm going to go all out for my mom and I'm going to wish them to be in the dirt too. If they was to do this to my mom, I'm glad that the people that you stayed with in foster care those few months were amazing people and did it from the bottom of their heart. And I say this because if they didn't do it from the bottom of their heart, then you wouldn't have still been in contact with them to this day. There are some people that are foster parents and they just do it for the money. They don't really have the love in it. You know what I'm saying? But it seemed like in Kathy's case, she was put in really good hands because to this day, she's still in contact with them. So it wasn't done for the money. It was done for the love. And that's what she needed at the time because she was ripped out of her mother's arms at the age of 14. And she had to defend her mother. And in the interim of it, she got hurt too. But her mom was the one who really suffered. And she's still suffering to this day, the both of them. And I feel like this, Kathy, you got to pray on it. You know, talk to God. A lot of people don't have God in their life, and that's okay, too. You got to do what's best for you. But I feel like this. Do what's best for you, your mother, and there are other women and women, people out there. And keep this man off the streets. You know what I'm saying? Talk to God. Talk to God. And allow him to lead you and guide you. But also, I would advise you, if you don't have one, get you a therapist. Because, yeah, I like to talk, too. I'm, I love to be an ear for anybody. But I really do feel like we all do need someone that we could just rely on whenever you know what I'm saying? Because I ain't whenever. You know, I only come on once a week. And I, I, I feel like, you know, it's great for us to be able to release stuff, release our feelings, get it off our chest. But I also believe that we got to do and we got to do what's right. We got to stay vigilant. You know what I'm saying? We got to protect one another because if we don't, who's going to protect us? Straight up. Leave your thoughts for Kathy below. Now, y'all know I have to go and make some ribs. Yeah, I will see y'all in the next one. <laughs> make sure y'all rate, comment, subscribe. Like the damn video, okay? Because I need the likes. Like the video, okay? And comment. I need the comments, too. I don't care if y'all say hi in the comments. Comment. I love y'all.